Technoland afternoon viewer. It's a sharp Tuesday afternoon and a winning Tuesday uh, for that matter. Yes, it's a winning Tuesday. Nevertheless, you will know why it's a winning Tuesday. Well, for us here, yeah, we're keeping it real. Well, let me first of all bring in the real talkers. Hello, Marshall. How you doing? I'm great. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's good to be here. It's a real talk with Kika show. My name is Marshall Anthony Onanya. It's been a weekend of unbroken. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's been Kika's birthday and um, the launch of Unbroken, her book. You need to read this book. Mind boggling. Uh, Ethel, you can how are you doing? say that again. I'm good. I'm good. To the birthday girl, happy birthday once again. Thank More you. wins for you, Thank darling. You. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> good afternoon, viewer. Marshall, it's good to see you. Same here. Good to see you. Good, nice good, talking good. to you. All right, over to, back. Over yeah, to, over Hello, to the viewer. Captain. Welcome to our program, Real Talk with Kike. Let's do the Real Talk today. Yes, yes, and yes. And join in the conversation. Thank All you. right, my name Unbroken is Mikela <laughs> but this weekend was a celebration affair uh, for us on Real Talk, and I just want to use this live opportunity to say a big thank you to everyone who made it um, possible for the Unbroken, the book on uh, the book Unbroken. Yep. Uh, it's a success story, and, and also to those who graced the event to show me love. At, this, uh, at the same time, I know that it was my birthday as well. Uh, I say a big thank you to God Almighty. I say a big thank you to you guys, my career family. I call you guys my career family. I say a big thank you to quite a number of people that graced that, at least graced the occasion. You know, it was um, the way people were calling me afterwards, you know, and the review of the book, gosh, truly unbroken. You know, sometimes I just... Take a, take a step back and I would just say, did I really go through did that? All of that? Did I really well, go through honestly, that? Honestly, I can't wait to read it. I think it's become an identity with you. Gradually it would. I think you should introduce yourself as, uh, my name is Kike Loma Tondovo and I am unbroken. I mean, it's lovely, fantastic. Uh, it's, it, it will gradually become an identity that you'll carry. Mm. Unbroken. Mm, mm. Have you read it? Too? Unbound. Review yeah, and okay, read a few review. pages fantastic. as well. Yeah. I can't wait to read it. Please, you need to read it. <laughs> it a, I will. I have a, my a, a lot of people have been <laughs> saying, gosh, Kike wants to pick this book. It's so captivating. We cannot just drop it. But guys, um, I'm grateful to God. But more importantly, I'm grateful to my children, you know, mm. for keeping me grounded mm. in amazing, all of this, you know, children. when I look at them, as far as I'm concerned, my success story today, it's all about them because mm. they're the greatest investment that I've been blessed with. Sure. And regardless of whatever thing I've been through, as far as I'm concerned, having them by my side, mm. I feel that I actually didn't go through anything, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I think that's where I want to end that mm -hmm. so that we can start with the show. But today, <laughs> 2nd of November, do you know some of the things that happened in our history? Let's find out on our segment on this day in history. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. On this day in history, November the 2nd, 1962, exactly 59 years ago. Chief Awulowo was formally charged with 26 others, including Anthony Ennahoro, Sam Ikoku, Ayo Adebanjo, Latif Jakande, Alfred Rowani, J.S. Tarka, Josiah Olawoyi, Dr. Oladipo Maja, B.C. Onabanjo, James Aluko, etc., with conspiring to overthrow the federal government by force. Before then, Prime Minister Balewa in a nationwide broadcast told the nation that his government had been aware for some time of violent intentions of certain politicians to forcefully overthrow the legitimate government in Nigeria. And they had been undergoing military training abroad. On October 26, the same year, the ban on public meetings and processions was extended to cover the whole of Western Nigeria. All right, many thanks for staying with us. You know, before we came back, my course was telling me it's, it's amazing how I switch. Yes. You know, sometimes a lot of people don't see what goes on behind the camera. But guys, <laughs> on this day in history <laughs> segment, exactly 59 years ago, I will know was you know, charged with quite a number mm. of people, prominent people, mm. uh, based uh, with, um, I, I think they wanted to overthrow the also legitimate so. government at the time. Allegedly. But, uh, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. But, you know, um, <laughs> Effo, what's your take yes. on this? Um, on this day in history, 
History is such a beautiful thing. And it's a good thing that this was recorded because as we see the hue and cry of um, governments in power, you know, accusing some prominent people, individuals in the country of wanting to overtake uh, the government did not start today as mm. history has recorded it. This is as far back 59 years ago, exactly. you know, so you see it, it has become a recurring decimal in our country. And you find out that these people, some of them turned out to be the founding fathers, you know, of uh, our great country, Nigeria. Of note, he's uh, Chief Antonio Nahoro, you know, who, uh, um, uh, how do I put it now? Antonio Nahoro was involved in the motion. He moved the motion for the independence of the country. You know, so I, it, history is beautiful. I think it's time we got it back so that our children and children's children can learn more and more from right. what went down. Thank right. you. Many thanks. All right, Marsha. For me, there isn't much to say. It's just a reminder of how history has uh, transformed and transcended mm -hmm. where we are coming from. Sometimes it's good to remember the hustles that uh, mm -hmm. we've been through um, from the eras of uh, uh, the First Republic and democratic, I mean, uh, military rule. Mm -hmm. And in order for us not to forget, not to get back to where we used to be, he who forgets mm -hmm. where he's coming from, we will not know where, where he's, going. he's going to. Definitely. Yeah. So for me, it serves a lot of purpose. <laughs> Our focus today is on Nigeria. We are a country blessed with talent, you know, charismatic people, great culture, and uh, wonderful ethics, you know. And this is what uh, I would like to refer to as the Nigerian character, a subtle but unmistaking attribute that. Uh, it's about us. Wherever we go to in any country, you would be able to identify with a Nigerian. And however, a few of the downplay that Nigerian characters have and all allow issues to separate us or divide us. And our character determines a lot of our affairs from leadership to politics um, to governance to human relations and many more. But on the show today, we will be having a celebrated personality amongst us who is already in the stu studio uh, who has exhibited the Nigerian character oh yes his Nigerian character raised him amongst his fellow contestant group at least the little that I was able to catch on on, on screen and I will say that his resilient as um, as a Nigerian you know actually end the millions of votes that made him a millionaire not just not just about the money but of course when it comes to human resources so on this edition we will be having real talk with him and of course we'll be sharing our thoughts beyond his personality all right white money many thanks for being here today on the show So that's how he, that's, that was his own niche in the house. Oh, okay. and, he that, and it has okay. become a universal phenomenon okay. now. Okay. You know, okay. you know he, it's just an exclamation at the end of some certain statements mm. that choke. That you know, he'll just say, and the way he says it. All right, guys, straight to business, guys. Yeah. Straight to business. Mm. I know that you are a true Nigerian citizen mm. and you won the Big Brother season six uh, because Shania. people identified with you beyond uh, not beyond being an evil man. Yes. You know, forget all this mass, everything yeah. that we've been talking about. So yeah. tell me how you developed your own true Nigerian character that end you not just the money but the love from many nigerians and are outside the country as well yeah. because i think that that is something that i really reckon with when it comes to your personality yeah basically for me uh, thank you for having me guys thank you're you you're welcome so for me uh, like i said uh, i always say mm. i was born uh, the Igbos gave birth to me mm. the houses raised me mm. and the westerners europe has made me Mm. So, um, these three regions of Nigeria has played a major role in my life mm. as a Nigerian. So, I cannot function without these three people, these three regions in my life. They made me who I am today. So, because of that, it's easier for me to, it's easy for me to come out and portray the true Nigerian character. Mm. Because I have a feel, I have a touch of the three regions in me. Mm. Yeah, that's it. So, so, what you're saying is, 
ina ni igbo yes ana ni igbo kan a jin hausa ina jin hausa so ngbo yoba ngbo yoba well done mashi so you hear and speak all this three languages of true nigerian now yes. just for a point of correction you know a few errors were observed on your profile while it was playing yeah. what's your date of birth which you noted what's your date of birth 1991 june 6th 1991 and yes. not 1992 no, i'm exactly 30 years old i was 30 this year oh, congratulations 30 this year. thank you what do you think earned you that mileage over the other housemates and the big bbn uh bb niger show very simple grace of god grace of god it's grace mm. I, I, I'm not perfect. If I was the least qualified, the least educated, the least one who entered the house with the, uh, with the least followers, every social media platform. Mm -hmm. So it's just great. I spoke for Okay, I'll come back Fantastic. to you. I'll just let Ethel take a swipe. Yeah. So, White Money, yes, you're welcome to Real Talk with Kike. Thank you. Who is White Money? Tell us your story briefly. White Money is a hustler. White Money is a street boy. White yeah. Money is someone that did not know he will be White Money. White Money is a brand that came out even before White Money became White Money. The name went far before the person behind the name. White Money was raised by women. Yes. White Money is a child that never had everything he needed, but had everything he needs to become a man. In total, in a nutshell, White Money is a child of grace because everything I'm experiencing today is a result of the grace of God. How did the name come about, White Money? Yes, I tell people this, but most people don't believe me. Mm -hmm. I've answered different names as a low G Spark, da da da. And one day, this name will not resound on my personality. Mm -hmm. And I prayed to God one day, a shabby prayer, just a shallow one. I said, I want a name that will stand out. Mm -hmm. And when I call it, people will like look at it and who it is. I did that in Ojo Eleva. I cannot forget that day. And I went back to the salon, I went to sleep. And you know the way you wake up with songs on your mouth? True. And that is how I woke up with white money on my lips. But I did not know whether it was a song or it was a name. Okay. So I said, okay, this is going to be my name. I woke up with it on my mind. I told my workers, from today, start calling me white money. And the name stuck. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> you know, talking fantastic. about um, the Nigerian character yeah. and um, I think leadership, yeah. um, a few people in this country, such as um, former President Babangida, believe that it is a person who can reunite yeah. Um, people, regardless of his stake, um, his ethnic origin, or his personality as well. So, what is your own take on how um, Nigerians should use their character or our character to get um, another person appointed to the uh, presidency level? Um, basically, for me, I would say the first things first identify with your strength. Mm. Identify with your strength, know what you can do know what you're bringing to the table, you understand? And have one people from each of these regions, one person yeah. or two persons representing, knowing your strength, come together, yeah. you understand? And align and talk, this is what we can do, this is what we can do, this is what we can do. Mm -hmm. Then find somebody that can at least portray 50-50% of these three things. Mm. Okay. So if you find someone that can portray 50-50% of these three things, Choose the person, regardless of his background, mm -hmm. tribe, nature, whatever. Okay, say, this is what we can do, this is what I can do, this is what we can do. But we want you now, because we see that you have a big quality of these three things mm -hmm. we want you now to represent. Mm -hmm. So that's it. The problem here is that we, we find it hard to appoint one person, because we all want to be in the front line. Mm -hmm. But if we can step back and put one person that's a visionary, that can align with our dreams, we don't need to be in the front line. We just need one person that will give the person support. So if you're saying that, because I know that you're a representative of the youth, and I personally yeah. want to believe that uh, our youth um, don't only see um, divides because um, our leaders sometimes tend to want to be the one to bring the divide. They yeah. tend to be the one to put the lines of ethnicity out there, like we yeah. don't belong together, yeah. don't cross this line. This is yeah. our class and all yeah. of that. So I must ask you, you know, the youth use the Nigerian character to unite and yeah. um, maybe create or carry on this NSAS campaign yeah. or how will I put it now, the challenges that happened last year yeah. and um, the world reckoned with it, reckoned yes. with the youth yeah. and they saw how serious we were or how we can be. Yeah. You know, I'd like to say I'm youth, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how should we be using, I must ask you, being knowing that a lot of people reckon with you, you are yes. one of the youths, yeah. um, how should we be using 
uh, that same character going forward, especially when it comes to the, um, uh, how would I put it now, supporting ourselves to the position yeah. of change that you're talking about, that yeah. we must appoint one person. Yeah. It doesn't have to be us, because yeah. I feel that in our country, where we are today, it's all about everybody having their own selfish interests to whether they are, they, are, they are supposed to be there or not, or they have yeah. the qualification to be there or not. Everybody yeah. just wants to get there. How do you think that we need to use our position to change our situation in this country? Yeah, first of all, we have a very important tool in our hands, social media, mm. of which the youths are using it very, very well. Some are using it to a good use, some are using it for bad purposes. Mm -hmm. Put that to use, first of all, to a very good use. Pass out and spread that positive message, first of all then we should be involved politically mm. in a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, n it's not going to be easy because there are already big shots there. But if, like I said, we can, like, recent I was sitting in the aircraft, I was sitting close to a speaker that I did not know was a speaker of a state, I will not mention. But this dude is not, this bros is, <laughs> he's like 30, 40, 40, he's so young, I never knew he was a speaker. I said, well, you are the speaker. I was very happy and encouraged. And he has been in the game for over 16 years. Mm -hmm. And he's still young and he's a speaker of a state. But we need more of that. Yes, we need youth to come into the power play. You know, they're scared, basically. But it's time to be scared. We'll knock it out. Now let us come into the stage and do this thing. We need more use in your social media. Use it to pass positive messages. Use it to do positive things. It's not about... Yeah, there are some other things that we can do. We need voices from the youth. Mm -hmm. I'm not the voice. I, I, I'm somebody... You are part of the Part voice. of it. Yeah, I'm just... Yes. Point of solution. Yes. That's the word. Right yeah. from God. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes. But I, I, I wouldn't want to put myself there. But I can support. <laughs> I can help. I'm not into the... Mm. <laughs> Okay, more yeah. different. But you've got a channel and you've got a medium, so you yeah, definitely. Use it mm -hmm. I'm using it positively the best way that I can. Let's come back to BB Niger um, mm -hmm. yep. and, and white money on the show. Um, your fans and yeah. that of uh, Queen, uh, is it Queen? Yes, Queen. Queen's oh. fan and fans yeah. and yours in very yeah. recent times have been trolling each other, saying that um, you guys have been at loggerheads. Could you? Throw some lights because because people are confused as to what's really happening in the house. We've, we've seen White Money Queen, and yeah, we have yeah. thought that you know there would be episodes after afterwards that oh, would yeah, go yeah. well. Yeah. What's really the state of things between you and Queen now? Oh, I don't know if you uh, we are my life this Sunday. Queen was on my life. We had a live video section, and all the fans got to see that there's no bad blood. We just yes. don't happen to be in the same space every time. Everybody's busy. If I'm here, she's there. If I'm there, she's here. We're not in the same space. But where did that Where did that suspicion come from? It came from the fact that from the house, you know, it was like you know, I was not really in tune. You understand with her, and it's not because of anything it's for myself. It was me, not her problem. She's an amazing person. She's a beautiful woman, strong, supportive, a great friend. But it was me that was not in the state of mind you know for anything because i know that okay i've gotten to this place i just need to align Stay myself focused. yeah mm. you understand? it was my own problem not her problem mm. but we good like where you very pair is like my one of my best friends now fantastic yeah. fantastic yeah. fantastic yeah it's one of my best friends now we're good i kind of like your choice of words you know i've just been listening to you and it just feels positivity for me my god now that you are a celebrity, how are you able to adjust? You know, it's different from the life you yes, were living yes. before getting into the house. Yes. So, for the benefit of the youth, just tell them how easy it is. I know it's just a starting yeah. point, you know, to fit into the shoes of yeah. being called a celebrity, mixing yeah. with people and going mm. places. Yeah. So, let the youth hear from their pair. Yeah, first things first, you have to limit your circle. Circle, circle, mm. circle. Fantastic. I don't keep crowds around me. And even I'm still not, still not even, still, I'm still adjusting. But from experience, I know that too many people around you get you confused. Mm. True. You know, like I told people, I plan for the entering, I don't plan for the commuting. The mm -hmm. first one week that I was out of the house, I was so confused. Mm -hmm. Because everybody was coming, lawyers were coming, I'm this lawyer, I'm that lawyer, I can do this for you. Everybody was just, I had to go back to my grassroots. Like there are people I know that could really help me, mm -hmm. but they don't have the voice. But they know how to do the And there are people that you mm. can use your platform to empower. to empower. Exactly. So I went back. My Baba is still the one from the hood. My style is still the one from the hood. Mm. I've not used any celebrity Baba. The reason mm. I've used basically celebrity outfits and everything, mm. but I still go back to it because this one's, I know they reach the mode. Mm. Oh, yeah, God, come, nothing don't change. Mm. I'm still trying to adjust to the life myself, but what I would say is the circle, limit your circle. You understand? Find people who can multitask. Mm. You understand? Like my manager is, you go do bounce at work, you go multitask. 
because me, I multitask a lot. Mm -hmm. So limit the circle, know who you can hold responsible for something. Then, you know, to the, someone was advising me today that why it's, your problem is that you're too free. Mm -hmm. I'll be available, not accessible. I'll be too mm -hmm. accessible. So that's, my, that's one of the things I'm working on now. Okay. So I'm available and then I'm accessible. Fantastic. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> why not? Why not? <laughs> I must first of all thank you, you know, for creating time uh, to celebrate with me on my day on Sunday. Yes. You know, that day was a celebration of personal struggles. Yes. Uh, will I say struggle or struggles? And of course, it's a day of integrity for me. I'm putting yes. mm -hmm. my narrative and showing my vulnerability. Yeah. And um, I want to align with you in the sense that, you know, the few clips I've seen of you when you were in the house and a bit of research that I made as well. I saw that you also have an history, you know, yeah. you've been a barber, you've been a shoemaker, mm. an artist, you mm. know, a generator mechanic, <laughs> name it, you know, or Kada rider, <laughs> and all sorts. And people watching us, I think they need to learn, you know, when it comes to uh, paying the price, when yeah. it comes to consistency, when it comes to yeah. patience, when it comes to resilience, yeah. especially with our youth of today. Yeah. And I like what you said earlier that you you still go to your previous barber, mm -hmm. you yes, know, yeah. to have your hair cut. So yeah. I, must, I want you to tell me or tell us yeah. something brief um, about that. But before you answer that question, mm -hmm. I know that today, once I open the phone lines, they will not allow me to talk again. We have Linda from Edo State calling. <laughs> Many thanks, Linda, for calling. What's your contribution on the topic at hand? Please speak to us from all your states, Linda. Thank you. Okay, hi. Thank you for this opportunity. I wanted to find out, okay, so what is the with regards to the topic at hand, and um, with the role play of our leaders who have failed us so many times, we're looking at how, I mean, the youth can penetrate without having to ethnicize our politics. Now, White Money has, um, uh, it has a big platform. So we're not saying that he should make any statement implicating him in any way, but we're saying that he showed great... Um, Nigerian character in the house. How can he unite the Yorubas, the Igbos, the um, houses, bring them together in a platform that will generally talk about our politics in a positive way? Think that for that question, mm -hmm. why money? That's for your, your, your thoughts. I yeah, think that's, that's for you that, to ponder that's on. That's for you to ponder on something yes. to work on, yes. especially with the great platform. That is that an you advice. Yes. yes. So yes. back to my question. What yes. you know? So I want you to tell us what's your take when it comes to um, how you think that um, those who are listening to us right now, what message do you have for them when it comes to all that I've mentioned above earlier. First things first, I need you to understand that every individual in this life, be you from the age of um, 18 is not really the mature age for me because I, was, I started being on the street from 14, 15. So the moment you have a consciousness of what is wrong and what is right, mm. I want you to understand that you have a choice in life. Mm, true. You have a choice. Never say, I don't have the choice. You have a choice. <laughs> yes. Mm. Everyone has a choice. That's yes. the first thing you should understand. Mm. So make those choices and use them right. Like for me, I have choices of pushing, doing drugs. I have choices of doing other illegal things. I never did any. But you chose, you chose to be a shoemaker, to, to be a barber. Barb, I chose to do all those things that gave me a little, little cash. The Skilled thing is, it was consistency. Work, yeah. mm. Understand? The moment I discovered that I could not follow medication, the moment I knew that, okay, this is it for me, I can't move forward due to mm. personal reasons, mm. I had to start looking, I started doing other things. I did multitasking, skill, babbing, everything. Anything that brought in an income every day. I started doing it. It looked shabby, it looked crazy, but I did it. Even for the show, Big Brother, I auditioned four times. Four good times. I, this is the fourth time I made it in. Mm. So you have to be consistent in your hustle. As long mm. as you're consistent, you believe in your chi. Whatever it is you're serving, you believe in it. And you're consistent in what you're doing. One day, one day, it will pay off. Mm. It will pay off. And it's like, consistency is the key of this game, and you have to be contented. Talking about Nigerian character and yeah. unification, Anambra election, Anambra state gov governorship election is... Yeah. All right, apologies, I might have to uh, interrupt your line of thought. We have Elvi from Lagos. I think I know who the Elvi is, but uh, who knows? Elvi, many thanks for calling. What's your contribution on the topic at hand? Hello, good afternoon. Hello, Hello. I know who the Elvi is. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. Thank you. So we just want to say, white money, we love you, keep doing you, and uh, you're on a very great path. I have nothing to contribute. 
Who <laughs> 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 She was the one dancing with you on Sunday. Oh, really? On Sunday, wow. yeah. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> Amazing. All right, all right. Okay, so I'm jealous because my wife and I had a had a bout about him, uh, and and I was telling yeah, him. I remember. Uh, yes. I, my wife was one who made me start liking him. In fact, when Pere and him had that scuffle and all of that, that's when I started liking him. But at the beginning, my wife, from day one, I said, that's the winner. I said, how do you know? Stop being, being <laughs> Pere. How would you see somebody and say that's the winner? And so we brought a lot of argument, heavy argument. I said, how do you just say that's the winner? How? Why? From day one. <laughs> anyway, my question, Jari. Yeah. Um, talking about unification and uh, character. Anambra State election, the governorship election is coming up on Saturday. One major uh, problem or challenge that the people have got to uh, uh, deal, with. deal with has been the sit at home, the no to elections, no elections in our state, mm -hmm. the especially brought about by the IPO, promoted by the IPO, independent uh, people of Biafra. And uh, this has really been a headache for us, saying how can we see that democracy can uh, survive in this part of the country that's in the east yeah. where they are seeking secession and a sovereign state yeah. what would be your word to people out there encouraging especially your, your likes the youth yeah. encouraging them to come out on saturday to vote well currently i can't really say much about that because outside the house i've been around everywhere but i currently was an number people didn't know i was an number so I had disguised, and I was in Anambra, I think that was last week. <laughs> For your own yes. safety. I was disguised, I was walking on the streets of Anambra, I walked to Onicha. All right, apologies, I have to interrupt mm -hmm. your line yeah. of thoughts. We have callers calling in and we'll be keeping them waiting. We have Ife Yuwa from Edo State, uh, I hope I pronounced that well. Uh, Ephraim, Ephraim from, from Edo State, many thanks for calling. Please go straight to the point, please. Go straight to the point. Yes, please. I want uh, uh, what is it? white money. Okay. Eh? Let him have an act with uh, what youth on what to do. I no, I think, I think what I heard is that I want white money, and I think no, that no, no, she no, no, wants no. white money to, to tell, to the, tell youth the youth what to do, what to do oh, about yes. something, and she didn't hey. finish her line of thoughts. White money, yeah. Yeah. but answer, oh. answer yeah, in that circle. Mm. Yes, sir. Who's mine? Yeah, yeah. IPOB and Anambrarians. Talk to the both of them. What should they do? Well, like I said, I walked around, and why I did that was no escort, no everything. I saw the unism there, mm. freedom. There was no routine. I said, so in my mind, I'm like, why can't this just continue into the elections and after the elections? You understand? So this is a fight that is beyond me. Mm. Because from my father's 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 father. So my own, uh, currently now, I'll just appeal for peace. I'll appeal for wisdom to be applied. And the wisdom will come from the fathers and transcend to the children. Mm. The fathers will have to talk to the children, which is us, for us to now carry out you know, a peaceful election. So what we need is wisdom from the fathers because this is beyond, this is beyond me. It's beyond, it's, this goes back, 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 way back. So but, but from walking on the streets of Anambra on a channel, just in few days ago, I, there was peace. I saw, I was moving. And I saw the about there and said, so why can't I'm not sure if there's peace because I have um, Dr. Abati <laughs> presently in Alamba, Alamba. So that's one of the reasons why. No, that was going. last week. So I don't know about so this. He, yeah, so so that, was one of, that was one of the reasons why we couldn't uh, be on yes. the Has he given you any uh, negative event. report? Yes, yeah, yeah. because they've been a bit of, you know, rancor, on, rancor and the likes oh. and all of that. Maybe it's when I, I left. That, yeah, uh, have you heard recently how the massive has come out? It was on the news today. To say? say to say to uh, um, IPOP. You know, you guys let the elections hold so that the people can choose their leader. Because if you don't, then you have the in fact you, you it give was, room to it the was, wrong it person. It was telling me a few minutes oh, wow. ago yes. that the kind of security that they had to attach to them mm. is is it's unbelievable. Wow. And must still be like that. Is the question. That's a scary picture, really. So I really need you to touch the minds of people out there. All right, we have Victor from River State. Victor, many thanks for calling. You guys, the, the people want to speak to. Yeah, yes, yeah, let them talk ahead. to them. All right, Victor, many thanks for calling. What's your contribution on the topic at hand, please? My contribution to this matter is about the, the state and how things are going on. You know the state, the way River State 
for now. This is actually your hearing me now. Oh, yes. Hello? We can yeah. hear you. We can hear you, Victor. I am a barber by profession. I also every day. The government never reason us. No uh, uh, and facilities for we barbers. They, not, they don't recognize the barbers. It is only when you carry gun, when you kidnap, when you do all sorts of things, that is only when the government will recognize you. The government don't know those who are hard working. It is only when you are in one court or the other or you make problems, that is when the government will know you. If you are not the government will not know you. So no matter how you work in this state, the government will not recognize you. Many, many thanks, Victor, for your contribution. But why money? Are you the chairperson of Babas <laughs> Association in Nigeria? Yeah, no, I don't no. understand. <laughs> I mean, you know, no, you know because we already said that people want to So I guess it's just trying to identify. Yeah, the barbers, the barbers always. The, 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 when I was when I was barbing, you know, professionally, there used to be there used to be a union. There's a barbers union. There's still is where, a union. Yeah, there's still it's still there. We still have the unions replete yeah, everywhere. Yeah, because because there's a, there's a price range you cannot exceed. You understand? There's okay. a price there's range a you cannot exceed. Price. The standard price, so it always comes from. But I think he's speaking about look at a mm. do hand work and government no recognize mm. me. Speak to that. Yeah, basically for that, I would say this year, even within, when I see the, even when I say do hand work, the government would not recognize you easily like that because mm. it's not just easy to come and recognize one person or two persons. Mm. There has to be a union that is in unison. You understand? Not just having a union. The union itself are they in unison because it's them that can take the voices, the people's plea to the government. Mm -hmm. You on your own can't just walk into the government. They won't listen to you. It's not easy. You can't get that easy access. But the union itself can do that. So probably what I would advise him to do is, in the union he belongs to, if he belongs to a union, mm -hmm. you understand? Turn out the problems to them. Then the leaders there can now go. You want All right. Uh, we have a caller from River State, Ala League. You guys just, you know, let's 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 know that right, we'll get a feedback from the audience. He's the man. All right. <laughs> he says it's from the streets. So. All right. Many thanks for him. calling, Ala League. What's your contribution on the topic at hand? Um, I want to ask um white money question. <laughs> Fear not. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm a of you. I I I voted for him from the beginning to the end. And I knew he was going to actually win. Like I, I, I said, people, I said, you can cook in as your strategy. If you don't look, you don't look. And the future, that's what I'm saying here. Okay. It's not possible for one to cook. I can hear. How many house made for things? And white like money, I want to ask you a question. Are you a brother to uh, Bianca or no? Ojiko's wife. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not. Right. Thank you, Alali. Yeah. Thank I, you yeah. so much. Yeah. It's Thank a, you. It's actually so, so. doing it. That's what we are. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Oh, that's, okay. Yeah. But you know, you were a little bit mystical while you were in the house. If I say who my father is and all of that, yeah, we'll yeah. get to that. Let me allow it for <laughs> Okay. All along, we've been asking you to yeah. speak to the youth. Yes. We don't have to get our parents talk to us all the time. Sometimes we have to feedback, talk to our parents. Yeah. Why don't you use this medium to speak to the leaders of this country, knowing that the three major tribes made you? Yeah. I think at this point you should be speaking to the leaders in the country, what they should be doing about the youths, because I think they're confused about right. what to do with the youth. Yeah. So basically, for the leaders, I would say this. Listen to the plea of the youths. There are youths that are very capable of handling situations that the leaders, like the people sitting and sitting now, cannot do. But yeah. there are people, strong, vibrant news that can actually carry out these duties. Give them opportunities. Give them yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Listen to them and help them. Because without them, you will not know what is happening on the streets. Mm -hmm. You will not know what is happening in the neighborhood. Send out these young, vibrant people to, okay, give us feedback on what mm -hmm. to do. The problem is that there's too much of hearing, listening. But nobody's doing anything. All right. Mm. You understand? Many so, thanks for yeah. that. Thank you. you know, um, white money. And let me first of all start from my girlfriend, Elvi that rang oh. um, earlier. Yeah. You know, because uh, for me, I think that she rubbed off on me mm. when Big Brother actually started and she <laughs> tilted towards white money immediately. And I'm wondering, why white money? You know, <laughs> and I, I've not been sitting there in front of the TV to. You know, mm. try to understand your personality, but the yeah. little extractions that I saw on social media, yeah. 
made me to actually mm. tilt towards it. But I must yeah. ask you a question because imagine how many callers we've received now. It's women calling up. Yeah. You know, no, there was so, a frame on Well, <laughs> most of them, <laughs> women. So yeah. money comes with fame. Yeah. Yes. Um, challenges. Yeah. And of course, women. Yeah. So what are you going to do with this? Um, and men. We, what are you going to do about <laughs> these three, about these three things I've itemized? And are you coping? Are you managing with with it? Uh, it comes with fame, mm. utilizing for positivity. Okay. It comes with money, invested wisely. Mm. It comes with women, find one, settle down, get married, make a family. Those three things come with. It, that's the best way to think. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Well done. Yes. The <laughs> mystical part, um, white money. You know, I said in the house, and you know very well yeah. that you kept that mystical, you know, yeah. personality. Yeah. And people kept asking. Even and now you can watch. Maria and Pere had some side talk, yeah. and you know, they brought it up to say, "Can't you see? He's using that, you know, to catch crews. Who is his father? Who is his father? Where is he from?" Yeah. And a lot of people on social media went on with that trend. Okay. White money, tell the people, you're not in Big Brother house yeah. now. <laughs> For some people who are watching currently and might not have the luxury of going to the internet to, yeah. you know, do some research. Yeah. What was it you were keeping away about your father, your parents, your origin? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, like you said, I'm normally in the house, so yes. freedom. I will last life, everything will come out. I'm from a descendant of, um, I'm from a real family. Um, it's actually honor doing, not honor. It's honor doing, and it's from a lineage of a strong men in Enugu State with the local government or home. But my grand 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 granddaddy was one of the first kings, kings. to mm -hmm. rule that region. He transcended to my grandfather, and very soon I think it will follow me <laughs> because it's Hazel Onyeze, which is king. Mm -hmm. On the way. Mazi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay now. <laughs> okay now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I think thank you. I must say thank you for coming on this show today. It's been an interesting one having you on the show. But I'm not letting you go first. There's a last oh. segment of the show that, yeah. is, that is called Trending Stories, okay. Trending Issues. These are issues that bind us together as Nigerians, as family. Yeah. And the first trending story that caught our attention is that of the high rise building collapse that collapsed in Lagos, um, Nigeria, which killed at least as of today um, six people and about 50 people people were in the building when uh, it Kingdom. went down according to uh, according to Vanguard uh, mm. uh, reports. Uh, that's what it's showing yeah. you presently on, mm. on the that's TV it's screen it's right TV. now. Oh. But I think that before um, I give my submission on this, I have to ask you, Effo, what's your take on it when you saw this um, this happening? Um, oh, first things first, I uh, would like to commiserate uh, with the families yes. that lost their loved ones yes. from the real talk with Kike studio right now we're sorry this happened could have been avoided yeah. this is yet another avoidable incident again in our history mm -hmm. and i think it is really sad because yeah. i've always said we have not placed a premium on life in this country because on the news we're hearing uh, an approval was given for 16 floors yeah. you know but the uh developer uh whom the owner of the property you know, got together and decided to raise it to 21 floors. That is on the news this morning. Now, question is, the, real, the, the developer who took it to maybe 16 floors resigned because he told the owner that he was compromising standards. Question is, who is culpable here? Mm. Personally, my opinion, I'm going to hold the government agencies culpable in this matter right. because they cut corners a good lot and we all know that all right many thanks for mm. that i think before i bring the men uh to give their submission let me first of like let me join you i agree mm. with you that the family of those who died under um uh, the collapse i comments race with you yeah. i learned that an it student was also oh among those who were in the uncompleted structure i want to say um thank you to lasema uh, mm -hmm. who have risen to the occasion to do their job because I saw a lot of caterpillars. I don't know that if that's a word to use right mm -hmm. now, even till about 1, 1 a.m. today. Mm -hmm. And I also want to extend some empathy, 
you know, to my Edmond Arred Daily Mon model, uh, who has a neighbor, um, like a neighbor acquaintance, in, mm. in connection to the building, actually. Uh, and um, uh, I, I felt really sad. The most sad when we hear all these things happening, until you have somebody personally mm -hmm. connected to it, that is when you will be you able to feel the gravity. Yeah, you feel the gravity of it. And when I was on the phone with him, I saw how broken it was. I just mm -hmm. pray that those who are affected uh, are consoled, are mm -hmm. comforted mm -hmm. uh, by God. Uh, but now, back to the contractors and the builders mm -hmm. and the building regulators or regulatory mm -hmm. agency mm -hmm. in our country, you know, I, I, just like you asked. What exactly are we doing in this country called mm. Nigeria? What have we decided to make, or will I say, why have we decided to make um, burial grounds out of what is meant to be a residential place? Mm. Imagine a building that is yet uncompleted. I, I, I found that can people actually take a second to actually think about this, that even, you know, the weight of people that are actually there right there, the presidential, uh, uh, um, what's it called, residential mm -hmm. elements, imagine a 21-story building. It is a mishap, but at the same time, we should be, you know, console that it happened now. Get me right? Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that I'm happy that it happened, but can we imagine if 100 people were already living in this space? It was occupied, yeah. So to the regulatory bodies or the agencies, I think that standard organization in Nigeria is very paramount right now. The Ministry for Housing and Infrastructure, now is the time for them to reassess all the works and the kind of assessment that you need to do when it comes to matters like this. And I think to round this off, um, I think the contractors in charge and the, uh, and the project team should be charged to court for whatever it is that may have happened yes. because this collapse shouldn't, uh, should have, shouldn't have should been it. Because I, I, I also understood that when this collapse happened, most of the houses on Gerard were shaking. Yeah. So I'm asking myself, are those houses safe? Because the foundation of most homes now, uh, you know, because, be they, because I don't know if there's a, a, a regulatory body when it comes to real estate. And I think I really don't want to go too far, but I just pray that um, Yoruba people will say that Amen. when bad things are happening, we will not be found Amen. guilty Amen. in that space. Masha, Amen. quickly, what's your, what's your submission? Well, you guys have said it all. Uh, just commiserate with the mm. people that have loved, lo lost loved ones and also the you ask the questions if there of course you know that there are regulatory agencies mm. they should be held culpable yeah. even the guy who resigned and said look i don't yes. want to be a part of this yes. he should have made a report as well no they said he actually wrote a letter yes a letter. I, I saw yes. the letter as well there I is saw the letter. so he did well so i think heads to roll mm -hmm. white money what do you think what's your talk? Uh, first of all my condolences with the, the, the family i was on my way going for a shoot when i had it and like what she said i had that 16 um floors was, was, was approved in 21. Yes. That one is a no-no. Mm. Like the both the the builder, the, the all, owner, all, of, all them, of them sue, sue and sue them, carry them come out. You know, makes sense. All right, many thanks for your starts. submission, yeah. White Money. I think the, quickly the second trending story that caught our attention is that of Obi, Obi Kubana, who was arrested by the EFCC and yes. charged with money um, laundry. I, I, I think. Um, F O again. Let me start. You know, okay. You know what, White Money? What, what's your take with this? Let me, let me, no, let me come to you first. I had it as well this morning again, okay. and that I promise you, I don't know how to come in there because I was with Obi two weeks ago. But Obi is the first person that hosted me when I came out of the house. I saw that. You understand? Mm -hmm. So what I saw was a genuine person. I saw a man that people love and everything. So I just have to fold my hands and watch first and see how mm -hmm. this unfolds because it's it's bigger than me. I like what you just said. Mm -hmm. Now I want to fold my hands and, and watch. watch first, and I think that this is where I want to. Put, um, and give my submission. Well, I, I would like to change the narrative. You guys listen to me. Because I think that I try to pick for some few people's yeah. uh, brain when yeah. I want to put my submission or analyze on trending yeah. stories. And uh, many a times when we see new things like this, we are quick to judge. judge yes. You know, we are quick to judge the person involved as yeah. guilty. It is a wrong approach yeah. and have big assessments by the law. As far as I'm concerned, the EFCC has the right to invite him for questioning, mm -hmm. has the right to investigate him. Yeah. They can call anybody, they can call me, they don't call me. 
But I'm just <laughs> giving an example. I'm yeah. just, yeah. So the person under the investigation has the right to, to probe his source of wealth yeah. and his businesses. He will also only be proven guilty by the court. So mm -hmm. we shouldn't be quick to pass judgment, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah. Uh, because it's, uh, uh, it's not a fraud star. Mm -hmm. I, I stand to be corrected that I, I don't think he has committed any fraud yet. I don't know about, I'm seeing a lot of money laundry and the likes, but I'm being careful also analyzing this. But let's allow the process to take its full course. Yeah. Then again, I think that um, the culture here in Nigeria, we are all quick to stigmatize. Yes. You know, any encounter we have with the EFCC, we kind of conclude that it is wrong or whatever. You know, yeah, we'll yeah. have to wait and observe the outcome of this arrest and investigation, yeah. like I said earlier. Yeah. Uh, but, but before then, you know, I don't want us to fold our arms anyways, because as far as I'm concerned, I think the evil blood in me will make me sometimes want to for, uh, support my evil brothers. Yeah. You know, um, I like what you said earlier that um, you, you were with him two weeks ago. Yeah. I also spoke to uh, Obu Kubana about, I think, four weeks ago or five weeks ago, thereabouts. He's supposed to come on the show. You know, but no offense taken. I just believe that the Igbo, Igbo people are industrious people. Igbo people were very hardworking. Yeah. You know, I, yes, I reckon with you, but because it's my father, but my mother is from Delta, she's from Agbo, and I know that we Igbo people are very awesome. industrious. So yeah. just like why Money said earlier, you know, when he was talking about striving hard, you know, talking about all what he had to do before he got mm -hmm. to where he is, yeah. you know, and the fortune that have come now. But I think that I believe that the Igbo people needs a break. And I, and I hope that all of this will be Will, will be negative. I don't want to even think that yes, he's yes. involved in any Please. money laundry. Mm -hmm. But Please. Ethel, what's your take with Anyway, me? I'll just say very quickly that uh, I actually saw this coming because uh, his uh, lifestyle invited the authorities mm -hmm. into his life, himself together with uh, all his, uh, his few friends around him. You know, I think it's just about time we started asking the right questions in this country. How did you come about your wealth? So it'd be nice to hear how he came about his wealth. You know, nobody's pulling him down. But what transpired that his uh, late mother's burial was enough, you know, for the right authorities to say, come on over, come talk to us, because it was after that burial, he became actually really loud. However, I, I, I just believe he will have his day. His Marzi Marshall, what's your so, take? Marzi Marshall. Nem. Nem. It's a very, very disappointing thing. When I heard it on the radio yesterday, but on a very serious note, um, I, I went on social media and I heard how, I read how people were saying, yes, I talk him, I talk him, uh, I talk him. This guy must be into something illegal. Mm -hmm. This guy must be a ritualist. This guy must be, I mean, and like Ike said, why must we be quick to do a media judgment. court judgment? So we'll, we'll, we'll just judgment? When the guy was throwing money here and there, we had, the media was agog about how I got this money or I got that scholarship or I got that sponsorship. And then here he is now in being invited or investigated by the EFCC. And you're already concluding that certainly they will find something. Yes, I might be of the conviction that you might have a little bit of tax invasion yes. there. Yes. Yes. You know, you might have that. Issues. Yes, yes, there yes. might be tax issues. You can't have all of that money mm -hmm. and really, really be prudent Pay. with your tax yeah. payment. Mm -hmm. Yes. But does that say he's a criminal? We shouldn't be quick to judge. Please, let's allow the authorities. They're not just saying that now. They started saying it from the beginning after that. Uh, but Nigerians were yes. hypocrites. I, li listen, yes. I'm not saying that it's clear, but I feel that he has his own fault, just like yeah. you said, when it comes to his lifestyle yes. and his personality. Yes. Yes. Well, we should not be quick to pass no, judgment. This is just on an this invite. Note, anyway. Indeed, it has been an awesome show. On yes. This episode or this edition of Real Talk with Kike. And thank you for our resourceful guest. Thank you so much, White Money, for being here. Thank, Thank you. you for making my girlfriend show the other side of her that I never saw. That's oh, how okay. you know, crazy. <laughs> Even my crush is married. Okay. I was okay. wondering what's going on. Yeah, she's married. Yeah. She's married to one of the most. Oh God! Don't let me start with that. Where do we find our broken? Oh, broken. Oh, my bio. Oh wow. And nice. just you know, click it's on the link because, um, and um. Yeah. You will get all the right information uh, out there. Wow. Many thanks again for making Thank this you. happen. I've been told to write my name to it. My name now is Kikelo Matondao. I'm, I'm broken. broken.